I'm about to be Dutch name, born here. Um, actually studied, I think 500 meters from here. I think that way. No, Hogeschool van Utrecht. Um, <clears throat> I'm a big data architect at Spotify. I've been working there for four and a half years, three-ish years in uh, Stockholm, uh, Sweden. And since a year and a half, I'm uh, working in New York, which is awesome. And New York is a terrific city. So if you've never visited, go. Um, I'm not going to talk much about myself, but um, one thing is, I asked before to the organizers, uh, I asked the organizers before how many non-Dutch speakers there were. I heard there are a few, um, hence this is in English, but this, my presentation sort of hinges on a Dutch expression. So if you <coughs> um, think, what's this guy talking about? Ask your Dutch colleague or just go with it, just run with it. Um, nevertheless, I'm, um, I'm going to talk about big data at Spotify. And, um, when I, was, when I was talking to, uh, to Martina from the organization, she asked me, could you do something in 30 minutes? And I'm like, oh, yeah, we could do that. I like to talk, so uh, probably needed a little bit more, but fine. Uh, but what can we do in 30 minutes? We could, we could actually talk about big data at Spotify. Or um, I, what I like to do is to listen to Pearl Jam, which is one of my favorite artists. Now, given the, um, the age of the crowd here, I'm not sure if you, anybody's familiar with Pearl Jam. Um, <laughs> Ah, nice. That's awesome. Um, yeah, uh, uh, thank you for not making me feel old. Um, that was like that's uh, the music that I grew up to. But let's let's just do big data, um, and we can do we can do Pearl Jam afterwards. Like, I'm I'm staying with a friend. I know he's a big grunge lover. He's actually sitting in the back there. Uh, after parties at his place, um, <laughs> or let's call it a Pearl Jam listening session because we have all all our uh, their material on Spotify. Um, Anyway, let's do big data at Spotify in, in 30 minutes. Um, as you've seen in the previous uh, presentations, this is a three-part thing. Um, part one is, what's the deal with big data? Secondly, how do we deal with the deal? What do we do with big data? How do we, how do we deal with that? And then, how have we dealt with the deal? So we're going to talk about what, what did we find um, and what, what kind of things I can share with you um, when, it, when it comes to big data. Um, so, what's the deal? And why is big data such a big deal? Well, that's basically what it's saying. Uh, so let's, let's talk a little bit about why data. Because we do music, right? Like, so you're like, yeah, data. Of course, uh, some of the stuff uh, has, been, has been discussed before. Uh, what is big data? Uh, why is it important in the industry? How does it help consumers? Things like that. But why is it important for us? Well. We were the first company to do music streaming um, in a free and premium kind of way. There was Pandora was already established, um, but mainly in the US. It's a little bit of a different product as well, but we were really the first company that was able to do free music streaming. Um, when Spotify launched in 2008, um, it was called iTunes in the Cloud. You could pick any song you wanted. Um, now it's much more. but. Um, Back in the day, the, we had, we were, so because we were the first ones, we also had the licenses to, from the record labels and music license holders to be able to do free music streaming. Um, music streaming was scary in 2008, 2006, basically, when, we, when Spotify was, was founded. Um, because in 2001, Napster um, was, yeah, music was, was, con was perceived by the music industry as to be a bad thing. Um, so there, were, there was a lot of pushback into music streaming, and free music streaming, and digital music, and things like that. Um, but we were able to do this in, uh, we started off in, uh, in, in Sweden, and we were able to do this. But um, for a long time, we, we had an exclusivity uh, on mu free music streaming. Nowadays, if you have a big bag of money, um, and you have a bunch of developers, you can build your own music streaming service. Uh, and we know that. Google has tried it, Apple is doing it, Amazon has music service. Um, 
And this is a quote from some billionaire somewhere, I guess. Um, so nowadays, it is about the best product. Um, and what is the best product? That's something that we don't really know because we, um, and it is actually the best product that, the product that comes from a company that does irresponsible things. But um, the best product, we, we do not know, which basically means we need, to, we need to be able to experiment a lot. Um, neither have we at Spotify ever done this. You as consumers have also never had music streaming up until, say, 2008, 2009. So what is the best? Well, we, we don't know that, but what we know is that we need to iterate faster. We need to move faster. We need to try things. We need to add new features. Um, and we also need to be able to throw away what doesn't work. And this is harder, better, faster, stronger from uh, Daft Punk song. And, and it's true, uh, our CEO uh, has this as his email signature, which says something about our company culture. So how do we use data? We use data to iterate faster. We can do rapid prototyping. We can do experimentation. We can understand what works. And in a lot of cases, actually, we can understand what doesn't work. So what can we throw away? And we want to do that in an early stage. Um, as I said, we want to build a better product. Um, data that we have, we can build, uh, we can use for, for data-driven features, like uh, you might know our Discover Weekly playlist that we build for you, personalized, every, uh, every week. Um, we just released Your Year in Music, where you can see um, what, have you, what you have played in last, uh, last year, um, which is one of my favorites. And um, that's all driven by the data that we have. We can gain user insights. How do, our how do our customers use the product? Which features do they like? Which features do they don't, don't they like? How are these users, how can we segment them? So we have different types of users. Not everybody is the same. It's also not that everybody is unique. So we can say things about large groups of people. Um, and we can, we can gain insights uh, for artists. So how do fans consume music? What works, what doesn't work for them in their marketing, um, et cetera? So to give you a little bit of context, what do we mean with big, big data? Um, we currently have 75 million users on an active, uh, active and a monthly basis. Um, we have many more that ever signed up for a Spotify account, but these are the people that come back uh, month after month. Um, we have about 30 million songs. Um, we have 1.5 billion playlists. Um, in Dutch, it's miljard. Uh, it's always confusing. Um, and um, we generate about, like, all these users together generate about 30 terabytes a day. And to put that into a little bit of perspective, that's about a bull.com every day. <laughs> so that's, um, and I, I don't want this to be a penis contest, no, but that's, um, that, that's what that means, means for us, which is, uh, which, is, which is very large. And of course, we're, um, we're, we're, we're worldwide, so you know, we have to be able to, there's, there's 6.7 or almost 7 billion people in the world, and we, our mission is to provide music to everybody at every moment. So we have to be able to, to deal with potential data from 7 billion people. Facebook is over a billion, far beyond a billion, uh, which is also potentially our market. Well, now, 30 terabytes, you say. That's, that's a lot, right? So how do you make cheese out of that? This is the... <laughs> yeah. I love languages, um, and I, I love when Dutch people use expressions in English. It's just the best. <laughs> so... Uh, so let's, let's make some cheese. And, and what kind of cheese do you want to make out of this, right? Um, we, all knew, we all know that Gouda cheese is the best. Uh, and that's mainly because I was born there. Um, <laughs> although I'm, I grew up in the south, in, in Brabant, so I have a very soft G. Uh, anyway, so let's look at that big data cheese menu at Spotify. So if you, if you look at the things that we do with, with big data, we can classify that into four categories. Um, we have the Camembert, um, which is reporting. Um, and I'll go into these, these categories uh, more. We have Cheddar, which um, is business analytics. We have a nice Roquefort. Goes very well with the red wine. 
um, with product analytics, and of course the best, Gouda, uh, or Gouda, sorry, I'm in the Netherlands, I can actually pronounce this nicely now, um, and you, I understand. Um, and we have, so we have, we, we have product features, as I said before, um, our Discover Weekly. But look at the, let's look at the menu first, and then um, we'll go, um, go and eat some cheese. So, um, as I said, the common bear reporting, um, because people need to get paid. There's a lot of discussion in the media about uh, music streaming and pay, but yeah, we actually pay people. Um, we pay artists, or we pay labels, and the labels pay artists. So at the end of the month, um, uh, the, um, uh, the artists or the labels need to be able to send us a bill. So we send them a whole bunch of data. This is what, you, what artists have been played, um, and just, yeah, just pay us the bill. Um, we also report to other licensors, and we report, report to advertisers. Obviously, that's when we send them the bill. Uh, but they want to know how their ad campaigns are doing, for example, in our, in our free uh, product. Business analytics, the cheddar. Um, it's about how are we doing today as a business. Um, what, how many users do we have? How many signups do we have? Uh, how many people have left the service? Um, we, some very important metrics is our, like how active are our users. So there's a metric that we call the daily active users, DAU, and then we have a metric that's called monthly active users. Um, and if you divide the two, um, so you divide the daily active users over the monthly active users, you get what we call an engagement ratio. Uh, that basically says the amount of users that have used Spotify yesterday and also in last month. Um, and as a company, we're actually doing pretty well there. Um, product analytics are rock four. Um, to see what works, what doesn't. So we, we, um, we re release a new feature, and we want to understand um, how, how it works, and if it works, um, what can we do better? Can we build multiple versions of the same thing? Think algorithms, um, and release those to, uh, to users. And the last thing, the Gouda cheese, um, it's actually using that, that uh, data inside the, uh, the application. So one of those things is uh, re relations or re uh, similarities. Um, it's very hard for us to determine which tracks and which artists are similar because that's very unstructured and fuzzy data. Um, it's all about feeling how artists relate to each other. Wikipedia has might have some information about how one band was inspired by the by the by another band, but um, is that true? Is it not true? Is it true for me? I don't know. So um, that, that's a problem that we try to solve by looking at how, uh, how music is listened to. Um, and that information is then used in the product. So we have uh, similar artists, uh, part, of, part of our product. Um, recommendations, to be able to recommend you the music that you would like to hear, be it new music or older music, or recommend concerts. That's all, uh, all done with data, and that's something that Menno uh, talked about before, recommendation, recommending other products. It's very, a very similar uh, thing. Uh, as I just mentioned, your year in music for each user, and it's not only for each of those active users, but I think that's a number that I'm, I don't have at hand, but I think we are about 300 million users that we have in our database. Not all are active. 75 are active on a monthly basis. Um, we generate what have you listened to last year. And I'll talk about that after the break.